was made of magic and moonlight. With you I danced all night in a dream, a dream that ended too soon. in the 90s. It was a city of enchantment, of frivolous ease and sophisticated gaiety, and at the same time a city of colorful contrast. For the upper classes, life rolled by as easily as the elegant carriages on the Champs-Élysées. Across the river beyond the ancient cathedral of Notre Dame existed the people, the people of France. And up on Montmartre was the gaslit world of entertainment and rose-colored vice. chestnut trees in bloom along the Champs-Élysées, and rolling past, in a smart carriage, that utmost in femininity, the chic Parisienne. A frilly parasol open, a daintily gloved hand pointing out to her companion the sights of the passing parade. Oh, what a lovely day, ma chère cousine. It must be a sunny relief after Boulogne. How can you live in any city except Paris? Woman's perfect setting. Just look around you. The Champs-Élysées. On our right, the house of an Orleanist baron whose dinners are the most studiously distinguished into Paris. And on our left, the Palais de Glace, where aristocracy skates next to the demi monde And don't they both enjoy it? The Duc de Marny bumping elbows with the actress Polaire and the dancer Otero bumping something else with Bonnie de Castellan. Oh, look, darling, look, 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 look. The pony chaise with the high steppers. That is the fabulous Liam de Pougie, breaker of hearts and of bank accounts. Hmm, she is looking so well since her suicide. <laughs> a suicide? It did her no end of good. The Veronal made her sleep for 48 hours. When she came to, she had an attack of nausea, which cleared her entire system, and she emerged pale, but lovelier than ever. As the Figaro commented, suicide has an excellent effect upon these delicate natures. They don't die, but they do purge themselves. But, oh, what life such creatures must have to lead. Night after night, to have to be seen at Maxime's. And, of course, what they have to do when they're not being seen. Oh, not for all the gold in the transport. I prefer the slavery of married life. Not that any woman of Paris could ever be a slave, especially if she could manage her four to five. Her four to five, my pet. The hour of the rendezvous. Oh, certainly. It's as long as any rendezvous should ever last. No time for any deep felt emotions, which are so bad for the facial muscles. The charming and practical game of love without love. Oh, plenty to be gained. The deliciously morale-building fact that one has a lover, and nothing is more becoming. What's the quotation? A mouth that's continually kissed never fades. Do I shock you, country cousin? Virtue? Oh, how sweet! Sherry, woman's virtue is man's greatest invention. 
luck. Since you are such a lover of virtue, look. Look there ahead of us. The Cathedral of Notre Dame. It is impressive, isn't it? Though one really should see it at night. By moonlight, the statues seem to come to life. One might almost imagine one of the angels gossiping. Saint Marcel, Saint Marcel, you feel like talking? Saint Jacques, are you aware? Oh dear, how dull! Is everyone fast as stone? Who spoke? Is that you, Saint Stephen? So you're aware? I'm so glad. <laughs> Everybody else seems to be fast as stone. It's too lovely a night to be a stone. There's a beautiful moon. The river looks like the old Roman highway turned to silver. I'd much rather stone during the day, not have to look at the sightseers. And then at night, stay away. Oh, I do love my niche. I get such a good view of everything that goes on along the river. I can watch it for centuries and never be bored. You'll miss it having your back turned. <laughs> Pity you can't change niches with St. Dennis here. Any views lost on him? The way he stands there holding his dissevered head in his hands. Did he really? After he was executed, walk about Paris that way. <laughs> Seems silly, doesn't it? I mean, if he could have done that, why couldn't he have stuck it back on again? The gargoyle's in a terrible mental state. Haven't you heard that noise he's been making? That <laughs> That's no owl. That's the gargoyle. His nerves are all to pieces. The tourists, they laugh at him and call him hideous. And the Americans scratch their names and addresses on his back, which tickles him horribly. <laughs> There's no getting away from annoying people. Not only people. I see the pigeons are nesting again in the King of Judah's crown. I don't wonder he's annoyed. I had a nest on my shoulder last March, and for weeks I was simply drenched with blasphemy. Have you noticed how cranky St. Genevieve is lately? She says that Paris is so sinful these days. I don't think Paris is any more sinful now than it ever was or ever will be. It's like the river. It's there. And everybody sees it his own way. Some lights are still on in the houses along the quay. There's a laundress finishing her ironing. There's a man and woman counting money. There are two women students reading books. American women students. <laughs> They're funny. It's growing early, Stephen. We'd better be going back to stone.
quite smooth, Blanche Sergi. Laundry called for and delivered, Blanche Sergi. Oh, Maître Charlot, ça va? Ça va. How's the song business, Master Charlot? You have to sell a lot of sheet music today. Bright, sunny morning like this, everybody wants to sing. Oh, bon, sir, I just love a sip of your buck. Saving most of my beer drinking for tonight, though. My fellow's taking me out. Moulin de la Galette. It's the people's night there. Oh, I just love the people's night. Anybody in all of Paris can get in for one franc. My fellow's making good money. Almost five francs a day. What with the two and a half I make, we'll be able to get married pretty soon. Oh, bon, sure, we're going to get married. Maybe even before the baby's born. We're both very respectable people. Oh, my goodness. I must tuck this petticoat back in the basket before it falls out. If it gets dirty, I'll never be paid. It's pretty, isn't it? A blonde. In a cute little flat over there on the quay. Her husband's gone on a business trip to Lyon, and she insists she needs this today. Je ne sais pas. Mon affaire. Oh, and look here for a contrast. This long underwear. This this belongs to a lady. An American lady. One of those intellectual ones. A school teacher from Boston, Massachusetts. Lives on the second floor of that same house with another school teacher from Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> They're queer ducks. Imagine wearing a thing like this. Ooh, what a ceinture de chastité. <laughs> Not that she'll ever need any. Uh, she'll never land a man. Well, I'd better deliver all this. If I'm late, they don't give me any tip. Every sou counts for the baby. Thanks for the swallow of Bach, Maître Chalo. Hope you sell a lot of songs. Got any new ones? I see a copy. Oh, you mean I can have it? Oh, thanks. How does it go? Turn my little mill wheel. Song by Maître Charlot dedicated to the mill wheels of Montmartre. Ooh, ça c'est du propre. Le Moulin de la Galette, hein? Eh? Oh, say, this is cute. Start it again, and I'll sing it along with you. When the morning sun is shining on the blooming jasmine tree, then I sing a song to baby of his daddy out at sea. Turn, oh, turn my little mill wheel till tomorrow. Turn for me. My papa was once a sailor, as for me I wash all day. Till my baby's fast asleep, I dream of my man far away. Turn, oh, turn my little mill wheel, turn. For just another day Rock by my pretty baby Here's a song to make you gay When your dad comes home from sea We'll be married by the good curé Turn, oh turn, my little meal We'll turn for just another Turn my little meal wheel. Turn my little meal Do you know it's going to be a perfectly lovely day? Oh, I am so glad we've decided to do the Luxembourg. The gardens will be absolutely sparkling. Our lunchbox, no, it's all ready. I put everything in. You know, Agatha, I wish someday we could be true bohemians. Take along a lunch of French bread, cheese, and a bottle of wine. Instead of Peter's chocolate, mineral water, and educator crackers. French bread can't all be covered with germs. People here seem to thrive on it. Couldn't we build up an immunity too? Oh dear, sometimes I wonder if it's worthwhile being so antiseptic. You know, 
I'm... I'm taking along my crocheting, too. You, you laugh at my crocheting, Agatha, but I, I... I find it soothing to the nerves, and I do think antimacassars are always a welcome gift. Well, nobody, especially, although... <laughs> I had thought Professor Bacon might appreciate a set. Maybe that is a foolish idea. Just the same crocheting does quiet my nerves. I wish I didn't have nerves. I, I'd give anything to attain your intellectual detachment. Why are you putting on your rubbers? The sun's out. I'm not going to wear mine. I hate rubbers. Even when it's raining, I hate them. Just because you wear yours doesn't mean I have to wear mine. Must we always do things exactly alike? Oh, I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean that. You, 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 you believe I didn't mean it, don't you, Agatha? I, dear, I, I think I must be tired. Uh, need a tonic. It's, it's all this hard work and never letting up and all for a Ph.D. Oh, I, I didn't mean that either. Oh, I know it's the most important thing in the world for both of us. Oh, I know how unusual it is for a woman to be a Ph.D. I wonder if Professor Bacon will congratulate us. Oh, how ridiculous. I'm not sweet on him at all. And even if I were, what would be the use? Oh, I didn't imply anything by that remark. Oh, dear. Seems to me we're both so touchy lately. So foolish to be touchy these perfect spring days. When Paris smells so deliciously of lilacs and acacias. Oh, Agatha, how could you bring up the drains? You are a realist. And it's awfully clever of you. Try as I will, I can't make myself a disciple of Zola. I'm afraid there'll always be a soft spot in my heart for Mr. Du Maurier. Oh, I, I keep seeing his carriages everywhere. Taffy and the Laird and those delightful Ibbotsonites. We never seem to have the opportunity of meeting any young men like them. Well, I can't help feeling it would be part of our European experience to make the acquaintance of some nice, studious Frenchman. I can't believe all Frenchmen have diseases, Agatha. <laughs> you, you never seem to feel the need of any masculine companionship, but, oh, I don't know. You think that during this sabbatical year of our... Oh! Oh, how awful! Down there, on the quay, right in front of the little cafe. Our laundress. She... She just pulled either yours or my... Union suit out of her basket and showed it to the old song vendor. And she pointed up here, and they both laughed. Don't look at them! They think we're ridiculous frumps. And that's just what we are. We're precious intellectuals and dowdy, ridiculous frumps. <laughs> and all your brainy talk won't convince me that we're not. <laughs> I'm not hysterical. I'm scared. I'm plain scared. I've been scared ever since last February when one of the children in my class sent me a dreadful, dreadful valentine. It was meant to be funny, I guess. It was a horrible picture. Of a horrible old mate school mom. Don't laugh at me, Agatha. I, I, I can stand anything but you're laughing at me. I'm afraid of you when you laugh at me. I, I can't help it. Some feelings simply can't be controlled. It's weak, I know, but don't despise me for it, Agatha. I, I couldn't bear your contempt. What are you doing? You're not going out. You're not leaving me here, here in this state. Oh, no, 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 Agatha. I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. It's just my nerves. Please, Agatha, wait for me. I, don't go without me. I, I, I'm coming right along. I'll, I'll, I'll do anything you want me to. I'll, I'll even wear my rubbers. And I'll help you on with yours. I, I'll put them on for you. 
Hold out your foot. I'll put them on for you. <laughs> Only don't leave me, Agatha. <laughs> you'll never, ever leave me. I'm not even dressed. But come in, come in. Quick, close the door. <laughs> Those ladies across the hall. They must not see me speak to an Englishman in my negligee. American school teachers. They sing the worst of every French woman. Oh, and you too will sing the worst of me. I truly never believe you will come. Otherwise, I will be dressed. Oh, quelle disgrace. It's only yesterday you meet me. You do not even meet me. Oh, what sort of a meeting is that? You are walking in the bois. I go past you in my carriage, and you look at me. I did not look at you. I look at you looking at me. <laughs> I did not smile. Well, not, uh, not to you. At you, peut-être, as one may smile at, oh, je ne sais pas, an amusing object. You are a British object. It's always amusing. But if I have known that five minutes later my carriage break down, I will not even have smiled at you. Oh, such a stupid accident. All the fault of that ridiculous Herbert, my coachman. He should have made exam of the wheel. He should have known it would come loose. When my husband returns from Lyon, I shall tell him he will give Herbert his congé. Oh, no. Oh, I should not tell him that. Ooh. If ever my husband find out I allow a man to speak to me, even an Englishman, ooh, la la, no. I shall tell him the carriage break down, that while Herbert fix it, I am obliged to sit on a bench for one hour. I do think it was an enchanting hour. It enchant me into doing something I never believe I will do, to give to a stranger my name and address. Ah, but you are a stranger, and please now, you will leave. Oh, pardon, monsieur, is no rendezvous. I merely tell you I am home every afternoon between four and five, and that my husband has gone on a business trip to Lyon. And you arrive so early. Well, I am still in my negligee. Oh, I, I, I feel like a cocotte. Oh, but to every Englishman, every Parisian is a cocotte. How can I believe you? There is nothing you could give me. Your ring? Oh, jamais de la vie is a diamond ring. And such a big, big diamond. If ever my husband see it, what will he do? It's very simple. He will strangle me. Oh, no, monsieur. Never could I accept such a thing. Well, <laughs> just to amuse. I can put it on for only the time that you are here, because you may remain for only a few minutes, and I must go get into my dress. Oh, quelle impudence! Of course you may not watch me. There, you see, you do think I am a bad woman. Otherwise, you will never suggest anything so wicked until you know me better. Oh, at least two weeks. Tomorrow. Mais pourquoi? Why should anybody go to England ever? Ah, non, monsieur. 
Non, 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 Écoutez, monsieur, écoutez. I, uh, I am a good woman. Always I have been faithful to my husband. How can I believe you are sincere? You know I cannot keep on your ring. Your stick pin. But that too is diamond. How am I to explain to my husband a diamond stick pin? Unless I put it in the little écran where I keep the miniature of my mama. Oh, the diamonds. How brightly they shine. Monsieur, just because you remove your stick bean is no reason you should also remove your necktie and collar. Shh! Somebody's coming up the stairs. He's perhaps the man to fix the gas. I will bolt the door. He will think nobody is here and go away. Oh! A key in the lock. He's my husband. He will kill you. He will kill me too. Kill, huh? Those back stairs. Hurry. Sit, toi. Hurry, down those stairs. Quelle surprise! Dépêchez-vous, voyons! Non, 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 non! Adieu, adieu! You cannot see me tomorrow! Goodbye, goodbye! Adieu, adieu! Mais je ne t'attendais pas, voyons! Mais oui, mais oui, mais oui, je viens tout de suite. Entrez donc, mon ami! Chut. Come on in, Herbert! Crop short of seeing him run! He'll be off way down the blooming road to Kelly in no time! <laughs> and with his tie and collar off, he was an easy one. Not bad. A ring and a diamond stick pin. Not a chance of it. He's off to dear old London tomorrow. A few more hours like this, we'll be getting back there ourselves, I hear, but no business for us goes better here in Paris. Ah, of course this is a good day. Some 1,300 francs worth of diamonds and me virtue intact. Oh, look! The bloke left his top hat and his cane and his gloves behind. <laughs> I'll put them on. I say, Herbert, how's this for a sissy loftus? Lend me a bomb till Monday, Herbert, my boy. I've got an horse. We're not of course. Down at the track, I'll pay you back. There'll be no hitch. So lend me a bomb and we'll get rich. But we'll get rich Diddle-dip-bop Against the windows 
mountain See the dark start with a sigh Rain may come in time Whispering in her ear Time Too tired to fly Princess be me Share a cup of tea It's a Sunday Of days, it seems to me that. 
take a goodly look around And the sleep swept from your head You got both feet on the ground And you wonder how you could have believed her While she ran around in whirlpools And dragged you down, down, down Plastic lady with a foam rubber mind Shallow waters rippling in the neon glow On and on, off and on, blank surface shines If there's something really there If there's there, something no, really there No, cause I'm there. never gonna know, no, no Don't look like you're ever gonna know
virtue, though virtue is verse of ice, and the man who would unskirt you won't do it unless you're nice. This is man's ambivalent taste, whatever is chaste has got to be chaste. Paradox is deep in his blood. He's after the rose, but leaps at the bud. So deep a virtue be. Every seven days the battle rages, flickering flames of fear consuming all. The players storm and the night close doors as inside forces hide down the halls. And no one lets down his own defenses to listen for a distant call. call. Get to the star that leads you further towards the universe you left behind. And no one stops his own travels to ask you why you try, try.
miscount my hours there, though sun and shadow still collogue in pace. These rogues aspire to act Hezekiah, for whom I sire in a day of trial, all for delaying his end by praying, turn back the shadow on my honest dial. Nay, sirs, though willing to abase the shillin, from noble twelvepence to the half of ten,
guess what? The world is turning round. And if we're not careful, we'll fall off it. And oh my God, the ceiling's falling down. If we're lame enough to stay around, we may have to catch it. No Christmas I heard the tale You told before Oh good Lord Don't hand me your scepter Your holy book And your magic horn Swept down the shore So let me tell you why we're through. You gave me loyalty, the religion of my life. To Uriti, I offered devotion. Moscolito, I caught him with my wife. I was hurt. Nonetheless, I was proud of her promotion. Bill, play, roll and rock the lid.
musicians, tricks, minstrel, excellent as I grew. I learned how to tell about changing times, nursery rhymes too. How to make smiles and magic, that's what I learned to do. And today, Mr. Virtue and the Three Bears. We hammer our tunes to make the bears dance for me long to move the stars. That's Flaubert. This morning at his gas stand outside Lucerne on Route 1, Mr. Virtue was found devoured by his bear. Mr. Virtue left no known relatives. This is remembered from some years ago in the Bangor Daily News. Mr. Virtue and the Three Bears. I knew a bear once, ate a man named Virtue, all but a mire of clothes. An unlicked bear, caught a May cub to dance for soda pop, who, when half grown, lumbered before us slowly, gurgling and belching in the gas stand yard on a sorry chain, and made rough music there. A chattel property of Mr. Virtue, untaxable and nameless, this black bear. For some a joke to sell flat soda pop, for some a terror in chains, wove himself slowly through foundered postures till hunger small desired, and he broke free by eating virtue there. So fell the single hymn to Mr. Virtue. In rough music that burst from that young bear, when sudden soda in his loins went pop, all longing and no hope, and he danced slowly, rearing and dropping in his chain-swept yard, till Mr. Virtue dumped spoiled blueberries there. If no kin came to claim the clothes of Virtue, 
Yet hundreds claimed themselves in that black bear and drank the upset crate of soda pop, kin drinking kin, drinking the stink that slowly, like a bear's pavan, swept the gravel yard and made the vertigo a music there. And yet, there moved two musics wooing virtue, those of the great and of the lesser bear, of the star falling and of new soda pop. And these two bears dance best when long time slowly overhead the dipper spills by inch and yard the northern lights on us from darkness there. So praises blue in this bear feast on virtue. The greater sprang within the lesser bear in music wild in the spilled light to pop and by created hunger move most slowly the blackest eyes fast set in their hard yard to loose their everlasting shivers there. Let us in virtue so beseech the bear with soda pop that he may dancing slowly move in our yard constellations darkly there. been foiled, his plans have been shot. Who would have thought woman could foul up the plot? But don't think his lowness is out on the track. For old Beals in bubble, who revels in trouble, the devil will always be back. I'll be back. <laughs>
wonderful thing to see the sunlight shine across the window after dreaming. It's so easy to take it for granted, but we're alive only because we are losing. Say it again. It's so easy to think we're independent, but just think.